Hello everyone, welcome, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to read faster and understand more from your biology textbook or your biology reading or whatever sort of reading you have to do for a science class. Now I know a lot of my students really struggle with all of the reading that they have to do when they start an AP biology course. For some of them they've never had to read this much for science before, and some of them really struggle with spending too much time in their reading, not understanding what's in the reading, and then feeling lost and feeling like they're wasting so many hours with the reading they have to do for class and then not doing well because they don't understand the content that's coming from the reading. So whether you're a college student struggling with reading in your college level courses, or you're a high school student just trying to grasp a little bit more from your science textbook, this video is for you. So I have seven quick tips that can help you both improve your reading speed and your reading comprehension, so stick with me as I go through all of these. So number one, a lot of students struggle because they go back and they find themselves rereading the same sentence over and over again. You want to practice reading in chunks and not reading word by word through your text and especially not going back over to read what you already read before. The best way to do this if you have a hard copy textbook is to take a note card and cover up the section just above the section that you're reading. Then you're going to move the note card down your textbook as you read so you can't go back and reread the paragraph that came before. Try to stick to this rule as best you can. Now if you're reading on a digital textbook, one way to do this is to scroll as you read so you're covering up what came above it and you can't see that text right above, or what you can do is increase the font size of the text on the screen by just hitting Command plus or Control plus if it's in a web browser, and then you'll be able to see only a certain section of the text at a time. There's also a strategy known as pointing or using a pointer or pen or your finger even to point to the paragraph or section that you're on, and this will help you track where you are so you don't lose your place and you don't find yourself going back to the same section as before. As you're reading and trying to read in chunks and not word by word, it's really best if you don't mouth the words and you do not vocalize. This slows your reading speed down. Some people may think that'll help them understand better if they go through and read each word aloud or even mouth the words, but that actually is not going to increase your comprehension or your reading speed at all. My next tip is especially important for biology, but can apply to other science courses as well, and that's getting to know the vocabulary before you go into your reading. A lot of times you can get bogged down by the scientific terminology in textbook reading, and it's going to make it really challenging to understand as you go through because there's a lot of words that you may not know. So what's helpful is sometimes there's a list of key vocab words that are bolded throughout the chapter or at the end of a chapter, and it might be useful to go through and highlight those or make a list of those before you go in and look those up or make note of them as you go through. Sometimes your teacher will provide you with a list of terms or vocab that you might want to know for that unit, and it's good to be familiar with those before you dive into your reading. Even if you don't entirely understand the word, familiarizing yourself with kind of what it is will be very helpful when you're doing your reading and will help you understand the section that you're on even better. The more words you know, the bigger your vocabulary is, the more you'll understand when you read and the faster you will go. My third tip is to start with the end. And so like I said before, a lot of textbooks have a chapter chapter summary or an outline at the end of the chapter. So go to the very end, or if it's at the beginning, you can look at that there as well, and see what the sections and the subsections are in the chapter. You can use this as a guide for your reading to really know, okay, what topics are going to be talked about in this chapter, these are the things I'm going to focus on, it'll be a little bit of a roadmap for your reading as you go through so you know where you are and you know where this chapter is going. You can also use this as a guideline for your notes, so you can use the outline in the text and the same structure for that as what you're taking for your notes, and then fill in important details as you read. You can also just flip through the chapter and scroll through, look at headings, subheadings, figures. This is called pre-reading, and what you're doing is just giving yourself a glimpse of what's in the chapter and what things are really going to be emphasized as you're reading through. It's okay to give yourself spoilers when you're reading a biology textbook. My next strategy is hopefully you are taking notes as you read, but you don't want to be taking notes on every single thing and every single word in your textbook. This can really slow students down and make it really difficult for them to get their reading done at a reasonable pace. So you want to make sure that you're taking limited notes, but enough notes that you can go back to and refer to them later and have them be helpful for you. Highlighting, of course, is not an effective study strategy, so I wouldn't do that as you read. But what you might want to do is take note of things that you would want to go back and make flashcards for later on. Once you have a list of those terms or those ideas and a page number next to them, later on when you're studying after you're done with your reading, you can go back and make flashcards from those sections that you feel might be important for your understanding. You can also make an effort to draw out processes and pictures later on too, especially for something that seems a little complex or something that comes up in class frequently. And you know that, okay, I need to understand what a lac operon is, for example, and drawing out how that particular gene expression works may be very helpful for your understanding of that process. As you're reading, you can also use a strategy of jotting down questions that you have as you go through in your notes or somewhere else on a different sheet of paper. 
This will be helpful because if the questions are answered later in the chapter, you know that you need to go back and answer those for yourself using a different resource or something later on. You can also use this as something that you bring up in class and you can ask the teacher when you go to this material for the course and say, hey, I saw this in our reading. I really didn't understand what it's about. Is this important? Can you help me out? or just ask the question that you wrote down. Another common mistake that people make when they're trying to do their science reading or their biology reading is they're reading at the wrong time or in the wrong environment. You wanna make sure that you have a quiet place where you can be focused as you read. You don't wanna read with music in the background or any other noise or distractions. It's okay if you need to put white noise on to kind of drown out the noise from other things, but try to find a quiet place where you can be focused and there's not other distractions around. That can be hard if you're doing your reading on your computer because you have a digital textbook, but maybe pull it up in a full screen browser without any other tabs to see. You also wanna to try to not read in bed. It is very easy to fall asleep and to lose your comprehension as you're going. It'll make you slower as well, especially if you're in an environment where you normally go to sleep. A lot of people like to save their reading for later in the evening after they've done their other work that they might have to turn in for a course, but this is really the least effective time to read and comprehend. You're actually going to be better at your reading speeds and your comprehension if you read earlier in the day if you can manage it. If you have a bus ride or time in the morning before the school day to squeeze in a little bit of reading, that would be an optimal time to do it because not only will you be able to hopefully process a little bit more, you'll also be able to think about that content throughout the day and then maybe bring it up in class when you go to that class. My last strategy for improving your reading speed and comprehension is to read more. Not just textbook reading, but any sort of reading at all. The more reading you do, the faster you will be able to read. Even fiction, news articles, any sort of reading for pleasure is actually going to help your reading comprehension and your reading speeds. The more you read, the more you're exposed to more vocabulary and new ideas, the more you're going to be able to read faster, read chunks of words, not word by word, through a section and understand that even better. I hope these tips have been helpful for you. If you have any strategies that have helped improve your reading speed or reading comprehension for your science courses, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.